Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to another edition of Icarus vs. This time around, we're checking out Sublevel Zero. This is a game developed by Sigtrap Games, and it's a fairly descent inspired, procedurally generated, uh, permadeath y type game. It's actually pretty tricky to describe if you're not familiar with a bunch of classic games that went under the name Descent. Now, um, if that word Descent conjures up warm and fuzzy memories of getting extremely dizzy and trying to fight robots upside down, then it may just be the case, it may just be the case that this game might tickle your fancy. So, you know what, we're just gonna dive straight into the game. I'm gonna pick the Hulk gunship. As you progress through this game, you can unlock extra different types. I've not really, uh, actually, I was gonna say I haven't figured out how to unlock them, but there's the requirements right next to them, right there, so now I look like a right dum-dum, so that one requires 50 nanocarts to unlock, that one requires uh, beating a level with accuracy over 85%, so they add a little extra level of challenge to the run-throughs. I've unlocked Hulk, I've completely forgotten what I needed to do in order to unlock that, maybe it was something silly like taking far too much damage than necessary, but we're gonna start with the Hulk, because we get a little bit of extra armor, and a bit more inventory space as well. And the whole setup behind this is the universe has gone a bit wacky. Something happened to do with some MacGuffin called the Flux Drive and, and everything went tits up. You don't really need to know anything about the story in order to enjoy this. All you need to know is that you're going through five levels of some crazy flipped upside down facility, fighting a lot of robots and collecting engine parts. That is the general gist of sub-level zero. So with that out of the way, how does this stack up against the source inspiration? What are the main differences here? Well, uh, not that much to be perfectly honest. The, the controls and combat are almost exactly how I remember them, which I couldn't be happier about. Just gonna avoid taking a few hits there. Because the original Descent was was pretty much perfect in my eyes when it came to controls and combat in a in a confined space. So I'm very happy that the developers seem to have gone with a policy of if it ain't broke, don't fix it on that front. Uh, where it really does differ from Descent is the fact that there's a bigger focus on collecting loot. And you're gonna need more loot in order to craft more powerful weaponry, in order to progress further through the levels, in order to eventually reach the end. And considering this is roguelite style, you're gonna be dying quite often. There is a fairly significant difficulty spike in sub-level zero, roughly around uh, sub-level two or three, and stuff gets almost unfairly crazy, but I suppose that's kind of the point. There's a lot of unlockables to be discovered here. There's a lot of weapon combinations for you to try out, and I'm still unlocking blueprints even now. I think I'm about seven hours gameplay time through this, and I'm still unlocking new stuff. I've still yet to unlock uh, different ship models, as I'm now currently using the Hulk model, and I'm still yet to get any further than sub-level 3, because I am absolutely terrible at this. Other main difference is, is how the game looks. There's roughly 100% more neon lighting than I remember, which is uh, both nice and kind of uh, encumbering at the same time. It can be a little tough to make out enemies in further along rooms as a result. They've all got these big glowing neon strips on the front of them, and they all tend to blend into a bit of a mush when there's a, a fur grouping of them. This, for example. First time I encountered that, I had no friggin' idea what was going on. But now that my eyes have accustomed to it a little bit better, I can just, you know, rock out with my pulsar guns out. But for newcomers, I can imagine this type of game with six degrees of freedom being able to spin around and flip all upside down will be extremely disorientating. But don't worry, that's part of the fun. It's why I picked up the original Descent all those years ago and, and why I'm playing this now because it just replicates that experience, that original experience, wonderfully. But in terms of crafting, we're just going to have a quick look now that I've cleared out this room at the crafting menu. And what you can do is basically slap a few items together. On the right here, we've got our craftables. We can make a minigun by slapping together our auto cannon and our pulsar. Uh, the pros of this mean that we have a much higher fire rate from our gun. It's got less damage, but over time, it'll do... It'll... it'll deal a heavier punch basically. The downside being it will consume our pulsar so we'll lose that gun. We won't have the two gun rotation that we can cycle between by using our mouse wheel down. We can switch between these two and um, it might put us a little bit at a disadvantage for some enemy encounters. Jesus that that's a lot of enemies. Anyway 
I'm just gonna try and deal with this room full of evil robots. We've also got dumbfire robots, which you can see in the lower right of my HUD there. And we've got a set number of missiles. The little number below the icon actually tells you how much ammo it costs to fire the weapon once. It's a little confusing. Uh, I've got to admit, there's a lot of numbers flying around in sub-level zero, which can uh, be a little bit bewildering. But certain weapons consume more ammo than others, so the Pulsar will take 0.7 units of energy every time I fire. And the autocannon will fire six bullets at a time. So it'll go down by six on my ammo counter every time I fire. So once you get your head around that, it, it starts to kind of make sense and you can kind of weigh out the pros and cons of, of having a more powerful weapon, but um, being able to see how it consumes more more ammo resources, for example. So yeah, I'd say that's probably one of the one of the biggest downsides I can think of of sub-level zero. It's it's fairly drenched in numbers. There are numbers everywhere and it probably could have done with a little bit of simplification on that front. Case in point, I've got more stuff I can craft now, and there are numbers all over the friggin' place here. There's um, the minigun stats, which tell me fire rate, damage, and uh, accuracy, I believe, at the bottom there. Then we've got hulls, which will tell you how much ammo you can hold through various things, how much HP your ship will have as a result, and how much you can hold in your inventory. And then down here, you've got the individual parts, which will make up the crafting, how much it'll cost in nanite resources, and between these three things, it's extremely hard to me... <laughs> to, 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 ah, brain! My brain just melts trying to figure out whether it's a worthwhile investment, so for the vast majority of the time, I've just stuck with what I know will kick the most amount of robot ass, and that tends to usually be... Um, um, oh, crap, I can't even remember the name, that's how memorable they are, Jesus. But yeah, when it comes down to it, I think crafting is probably the weakest aspect of sub-level zero, and that's chiefly because it just seems to get in the way of the good stuff. And by good stuff, I mean this. I mean spinning around like a lunatic, making evil robots go boom with high-powered weaponry. That is where this game shines the brightest, and ideally, it should be doing everything it can to facilitate that without obstruction. And, and that's what crafting feels like to me. It feels like a little bit of an obstruction of a of a stop sign in the middle of all the action, but the action carries on regardless, so you, <laughs> you've got this kind of frustrating situation where you think you've cleared out all the bots, you're in the crafting screen, and they can still attack you regardless, and you're going to lose a lot of that precious health. And uh, yeah, like I say, it just, it just seems to frustrate things. I'd rather see it between missions, like the, the ship upgrades from nanites, than something you have to deal with in the middle of the action. That, that would improve it a little bit for me, but like I say, it's it's just a nitpick to be perfectly honest, because I still find the rest of it tremendously enjoyable. I mean, a lot of people can take or leave the art style, a lot of people are vehemently opposed to this low poly, you know, pixely type style, but, you know, it doesn't really bother me all that much. Especially with regards to playing the original Descent, which, um, you know, didn't really look too different. I mean, the enemies were probably a little bit more distinctive in the original Descent. I probably would have liked that a little bit more here, but hey. Can't complain, can't complain, it still does a bang up job. I can still tell which enemies are which, and what they're generally gonna do by sight alone, which is um, exactly what you want when it comes to enemy design. You wanna know, with a minimal amount of information, what that thing is gonna try and do to you as soon as you see it. Ultimately, it all comes down to one very important question. Is it any fun? And for me, that answer would be yes. It's a tremendous amount of fun. It's also a tremendous challenge as well. I've been playing this for upwards of 10 hours total now, I think, and I've still yet to get anywhere near sub-level 4. I'm still discovering new blueprints and new weaponry and still trying to navigate my way around the procedurally generated levels each new run through, and um, there's a lot of replayability here. And if you're in for that kind of thing, I can't see you going far wrong with sub-level 0. If you want to check it out, it's available on Steam. The link is in the description below for the Steam page. In the UK, you can bag it for $10.99. If you're in the US, it's $14.99. And in the EU, it's $13.99. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And feel free to leave a comment if there's anything you'd like to discuss. This has been Mr. Icarus. Icarus out.